Good evening. My name is Marilyn Swan, Associate Professor at Minnesota State University Mankato School of Nursing and President of Mu Lambda Chapter Sigma Theta Tau International, the Honor Society of Nursing. Welcome to our virtual induction ceremony for spring 2022. Thank you for celebrating this special occasion with us. This event has been pre-recorded and will be presented on the Minnesota State University Mankato School of Nursing YouTube channel. We encourage you to make comments and to support your student or nurse leader on their induction this evening. I'd like to take just a moment to introduce our chapter leaders. Aaron Cleave is president-elect and our governance chair. Allison Kreninski is vice president. Abigail Simic, secretary. Brett Anderson, treasurer. Kelly Crumweighty, faculty counselor. Laura Schwartz, faculty counselor. Pawasha Nasari, student leadership intern. Chris Tuft, Leadership Succession, Julia Hebenstreet, Communication Newsletter, Samantha Lindquist, Marketing and Communication Coordinator. So now let's begin with our induction. For more than 90 years, Sigma has been recognizing and celebrating excellence in scholarship, leadership, and service within nursing and midwifery. The Honor Society, today known as Sigma, was founded as Sigma Theta Tau International in 1922 by six nursing students at Indiana University. From those six founding members, our organization has grown to more than 135,000 active members in more than 560 chapters in over 100 countries around the world. Sigma also collaborates with several global organizations to improve the health of the world's population, including representation at the United Nations. This offers members the opportunity to extend their research and their reach out of their own communities. We are excited and filled with pride today to welcome our new inductees into our diverse and global membership. Sigma members are leaders at all levels of the healthcare industry. The society only extends membership to students in baccalaureate or graduate programs who have demonstrated superior academic achievement, academic integrity, and professional leadership potential, and to nurse leaders who are candidates because they exhibit exceptional achievements in nursing. Our membership includes top-notch nursing executives, clinicians, educators, researchers, policymakers, entrepreneurs, and others. You are among a distinguished group of nurses, students and professionals who have met or exceeded the rigorous standards required to receive an invitation to join Sigma, and you truly deserve our congratulations. The leadership and scholarship you have displayed represent the essence of our society. Together, we are Sigma. Our founders chose the Greek letters Sigma, Theta, Ta, taken from the Greek words meaning love, courage, and honor, as they believe them to be the enduring values and the root of the nursing profession. Our crest, which adorns your membership certificate, symbolizes these enduring values reminding us of our commitment to wisdom and discern discernment as represented by the eye, service, professional endeavor, and strength of leadership as represented by the pillars of stone to the right and the left, and knowledge as represented by the lamp. Our key embedded in the membership pin reminds us of our charge to uphold love, courage, and honor and is a symbol of scholarship. The cup denotes the satisfaction of professional life. The circle with its six stars represents the six founders. The lamp is the lamp of knowledge and the letters in black <clears throat> represent our charge. <clears throat> 
Remember that our key symbolizes your commitment to nursing excellence. The purpose of this ceremony is not only to honor you as a new member and celebrate your successes, but it also serves as our pledge to support you throughout your nursing career and to be a lifelong resource for you. This support will come in part through the opportunity to participate in Sigma's communities of interest, mentoring programs, and academies. You will also have access to other benefits um, such as nursing continuing professional education courses, the Journal of Nursing Scholarship, World Views on Evidence-Based Nursing, and Nursing Centered, which are all highly respected journals and resources. Your induction is not the end. It is a culmination of your scholarly and professional achievements. Your indu induction signifies the beginning of your membership journey the start of your involvement within a global network of peers and mentors who are here to guide and support you wherever your nursing career may take you. At this time, we will receive into membership these outstanding new members. Inductees, please feel free to stand up and to recite this pledge wherever that you are at. Please accept the privileges and responsibilities of Sigma membership by repeating after me. I accept membership in Sigma Theta Tau International. And I pledge to fulfill its commitment to nursing excellence, knowledge, service, and leadership throughout my career. Thank you, inductees. Please join me um, in welcoming and congratulating our new Sigma members. I wish I was with everyone and could hear your applause. Now that you are official members of Sigma, the opportunities to become involved and to grow and develop as leaders and to contribute to the nursing profession are virtually endless. Personally, I have enjoyed being um, involved and serving on the program committee, and I've served in different leadership positions over a number of years. I've been attended the biennial conference a couple of times um, in Indianapolis and Washington, D.C., um, and then once virtually. And it was in Washington, D.C. that I got to know President-elect Aaron Cleave quite well. We had um, a really great time. And at the Indianapolis conference, uh, Vice President Ali Kroninsky and I, we ran for research, or actually we maybe walked for research, um, to raise monies for global nursing research. So my message here is really very simple. Getting involved is easy, and more importantly, it's fun. And um, I encourage you to get involved as much as you're able um, as you um, begin your membership. It is now my pleasure to introduce our president-elect, Aaron Klee. Thank you, Marilyn. Again, welcome everyone, and thank you for celebrating our new Sigma Theta Tau International inductees with us this evening. And congratulations to our new members. Tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing our newest inductees. As we continue to adapt to online celebrations, we wanted to take the time to recognize each of our new members. I will first read each inductee's name, followed by a presentation submitted by our inductees with a version of what induction into Sigma means to them. Our graduate student inductees, Abimbola Fatijo, Melissa Pender, Desiree Rowling, and Badrio Yassin. Our BSN Completion Program student inductees, Jamie Crone, Kristen Parker, and Sawyer Sass. Our senior four semester students are Jaden Fritz, Olivia Grassel, McKenna Hogan, Kayleen Jones, Melissa Owens, and Jordan Short. Our senior third semester student inductees are Elizabeth Anderson, Josie Fredrickson, Amanda Gross, Lindsay Schobert, and Alexis Wollers. I will begin presenting our graduate students. Abimbola Fatijo. 
I'm a doctoral FMP student at MSU Mankato. I'm looking forward to graduating next spring and joining the workforce of new nurse practitioners, providing the best care possible to our patients who entrust us with their care. Nursing excellence to me is providing utmost care to our patients, advocating for their care needs where necessary, and making their health and well-being our priority. Marissa Pender. I've known since childhood that nursing is my career calling. It brings me so much joy to be able to tangibly impact lives and create meaningful relationships with patients and families. Nursing excellence encompasses my belief of delivering extraordinary nursing care. I believe we are uniquely poised to holistically meet patient needs and empower them as active participants in their health and well-being. Nursing excellence also involves one's professional conduct, scholarship, interprofessional engagement, and overall contributions to the profession. Desiree Rowling. I'm married with three children, eight, six, and five. I have been in healthcare for 16 years and continue to follow my passion for nursing. I'm currently studying to receive a Doctor of Nursing Practice Family Nurse Practitioner degree at Minnesota State University, Mankato. I'll graduate in spring of 2023. I believe nursing excellence encompasses a holistic view of health to identify individual, individualized health goals while utilizing empowerment and collaboration to help others reach their optimal well-being. Adriel Yassim, I've been a nurse for eight years. I'm currently finishing up my second year in the FNP DNP program. I believe having a duty to our patients to care for them in the best way that we can. Nursing excellence is what we should all strive for. It is when caring for our patients, we do not let our personal lives affect their care and to put their interests above all, including colleagues and their loved ones. Again, congratulations to our graduate student inductees. We will now continue with our RMBS completion program student inductees. Jamie Krohn, I have an interest in continuing my education, focusing on family health. To have pride in work we do as nurses and striving to do more than the minimum, that is nursing excellence. Christy Parker, nursing excellence for me means continuing to learn and grow as a nurse so I can provide safe, high quality care and be a strong advocate for my patients and my profession. I've had the privilege to be a nurse for 15 years. The support of my family has allowed me to continue to strive for excellence. Sawyer Sass, it is an honor to become a member of Sigma Global Nursing Excellence Honor Society. While my journey through nursing has been less traditional than others, I have worked diligently to put my best work forward and strive for excellence. I look forward to the personal and professional connections I will make as a member of this honor society as I resume my career as a nurse caring for patients at the bedside. Congratulations to our RMBS Completion Program student inductees. I will now introduce our senior four semester RM student inductees. Jaden Fritz. In my opinion, nursing excellence can be defined as the balance between both the art and the scientific aspects of our chosen profession. Nursing excellence embodies the very thoughts, actions, and words that a person uses to provide care to the people around them. On May 6th, I will be commissioning as a second lieutenant in, to the active duty component of the Army Nurse Corps, and I wish to pursue a career in either the ER, ICU, or another unit involving trauma care. Olivia Grassel. I am from Basketball, Wisconsin, which is a small town in Southwest Wisconsin. My passion for nursing stems from the personal experiences with nurses. I was able to see how nurses cared for the patient and family and decided that I wanted to do that for others. Excellence in nursing means caring for the patient and family to the best of my ability. It means that I'm caring for the patient as a whole person and being an advocate for the, their best interests. McKenna Hogan. I am an MSU Spring 2022 graduate, or, sorry, nursing graduate, originally from Wilmer, Minnesota. I have had the honor of serving as the Meredith Scholar. I have enjoyed working in the Simulation Center and have grown to be the lead in different projects and grown in my love of teaching. I have accepted a job at Caris Health Hospital in Wilmer, Minnesota. In the future, I plan on going back to school to get an advanced degree and do some teaching. Nursing excellence means being a professional nurse in pursuit of advocating for patient health, patient care, and safety in all aspects of care. 
along with a passion to grow in knowledge and integrity. Kayleen Jones, you know nursing excellence when you see it. Over the past few years, I have seen exhausted nurses take on students with enthusiasm. I've witnessed my peers hold patients' hands and wipe their tears. I have been inspired by my professors. Nursing excellence is all of these things. It is facing a difficult day with determination, encouraging those around you, and striving for improvement through lifelong learning. Nursing excellence comes from those who demonstrate both competence and compassion while transcending expectations. Melissa Owens, I'm thankful and honored to be able to join Sigma Nursing Excellence Means to Me, striving to promote health within the community and provide the best possible care following evidence-based best practices. I can work towards achieving nursing excellence by advancing my nursing knowledge through continuous learning opportunities, which Sigma can provide. After graduation, I, begin, I plan to begin my nursing career on a medical surgical unit to build my clinical skills and later earn my CNOR certification. Jordan Short, I grew up surrounded by healthcare. As a result, I have witnessed the tremendous impact to, that nursing can have on patients and their families. To me, nursing excellence entails not only competency, but also going into patient care. Nursing excellence highlights holistic patient care and embraces each patient's individuality and uniqueness. Nursing excellence is the ultimate standard for how I hope to care for patients in the future. Congratulations to our fourth semester RN student inductees. I will now introduce to you our third semester RN student inductees. Elizabeth Anderson. My name is Elizabeth Anderson and I'm from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. I graduated from a small town high school in 2019 and decided to pursue nursing here at Minnesota State University, Mankato. While studying here, I have not only grown to love the nursing profession, but I also have learned what nursing excellence truly means. Nursing excellence is the ability of a nurse to provide the best care to their patients while taking care of themselves and their health. Josie Frederickson. Hi, I'm Josie Frederickson and I'm from Mankato, Minnesota. I chose nursing to give back to the community. What nursing excellence means to me is to give my patients holistic and meaningful care. I also wanna work as a team with the other healthcare members on the unit. Amanda Gross. I graduated from Sartell High School in 2017. I changed my major twice before realizing my calling is to be a nurse. I am the happiest when I'm helping others and when I am with my Husky Quinn. I love traveling, painting, and working out. The picture to the right is of me on my most recent trip to Hawaii in March 2022. Nursing excellence to me is integrating theoretical and pra practical knowledge while working with all individuals. Most importantly, using essential skills to deliver the best care possible to patients, family, and the community. I believe treating each individual client with respect and adapting their plan of care to their needs and wants should be a priority for all nurses. Lastly, nursing excellence is the ability to practice ethically while identifying and addressing complex issues. Lindsay Schobert. Hi, my name is Lindsay Schobert and I am from Brandon, South Dakota. I chose to become a nurse because I enjoy caring for others. What nursing excellence means to me is to work hard to provide the best care to my patients. I look forward to graduating in December and I hope to become a pedi pediatric oncology nurse. My name is Alexa Wollers. I'm from Savage, Minnesota. I chose nursing to provide quality care to my future patients. What nursing excellence means to me is working with a team to provide that. Alexis Wollers. My name is Alexis Wollers and I am from Savage, Minnesota. I chose nursing to provide quality care to my future patients. What nursing excellence means to me is working with a team to provide care that enhances better practice and the ability to relate to patients and their families. Congratulations to these new Sigma members. Now that you are official members of Sigma, the opportunities to become involved, to grow and develop as leaders, and to contribute to the nursing profession are virtually endless. We hope that you will actively participate in the Lambda chapter and fully enjoy the member benefits offered by Sigma. Each of you will experience membership in your own way. In fact, Sigma membership is an experience that is yours to design. I hope that you will make use of the many opportunities that membership has to offer. 
Not only do you have the opportunity to be involved locally, but there are opportunities to participate in the global organization at a regional and international level as well. Good evening, my name is Tammy Neiman. I'm faculty at Minnesota State University Mankato. Um, I am also part of the awards committee this year with Allie and Sally. We have multiple awards to give out this evening, so let's get started. The first is the Phyllis Roseberry Service Award. The recipient of this award is Pat Shortall. Um, Pat was active in community service prior to and since her retirement in nursing. During her nursing career, she was advocating and volunteering for organizations that supported the marginalized members of our community. She role modeled community activism and was able to speak to the needs of the underserved. She was instrumental in getting the Yellow Ribbon Suicide Prevention Hotline established in our area and went on to serve on the board of directors. Pat was a founding member of, member of Southern Minnesota Nurses, which was an organization that provided CE opportunities for practicing nurses, mentorship of nursing students, and nursing student scholarships. Today, she is an advocate for Connections Ministry in Mankato and frequently provides and serves meals to individuals and families struggling with homelessness. She uses her Facebook platform to inform the community of needs this group has and rallies support for upcoming events. Pat gives herself consistently to lift those around her. Mankato is a better community because of the work that Pat is doing. Congratulations. Second award is the Kathy Schwer Nurse Mentorship Award. And the recipient this year is Dr. Hans Peter DeRuder. Hans is responsive to student learning needs and sets realistic expectations. The student, there were a couple students that nominated Hans this year. Um, they found his advice for working parents who were students to be helpful. His most memorable advice to the student um, got her through the program that was needed to put her best yet keep up in mind that this terminal degree and having an A for all classes may be unrealistic. Besides being a great teacher and mentor, he is also a great leader. His leadership skills were evident in the accreditation process for the BSN to DNP program at MSU Mankato, um, and the student would be thrilled to see him re receive this recognition. Another student wrote, Dr. DeRuder did an amazing job mentoring several DNP projects this past year for the BSN to DNP program. He also provided leadership in the accreditation process for the BSN to DNP program at MSU Mankato. He is unfailingly kind to students and available to help graduate students with coaching and mentorship throughout the BSN to DNP program. The student found him to be kind, helpful, helpful and responsive throughout their time in the program, even though he is very busy. He also mentored the student on a research project and thinks he is very deserving of this recognition. So congratulations. Dr. Kristen Abbott Anderson is the recipient of the Julie Hebben Street Presidential Research Award. Kristen meets all four categories of research, practice, education, and service partnership. Kristen still actively works in home hospice care, teaches and is co-director of the Glenn Taylor Institute for Family and Societal Nursing, and continues to do research, including co-leading an international research team. Currently and in the recent past, she also mentors numerous students in research projects that they have presented at regional and international conferences. Her service always amazes the nom the nominator um, with the work she does in the Singing Hills Chorus and the Alzheimer's Walk that she does every year. Congratulations. The next award is the Cindy Schwab Sherb Research Dissemination Award and the recipient of this is Dr. Marilyn Swan. Marilyn began working with rural nursing theory during her doctoral studies. Rural nursing theory has foundational concepts that lack formal concept analysis. Um, in addition, the analyses completed with theory development are dated and require re-examination. As a middle range nursing theory, a strong conceptual foundation is needed to explain rural nursing practice. 
Her first con concept analysis was completed on the rural nursing theory concept, lack of anonymity, and was published in 2017. Since that time, she has developed an instrument to measure lack of anonymity and conducted a study exploring the relationship between secondary tra traumatic stress and lack of anonymity in nursing practicing, nurses practicing in the metropolitan, micropolitan, and rural locales. In 2018, Dr. Swan and Dr. Hobbs were invited to contribute a chapter to a new edition of the Rural Nursing Theory Book. The chapter focuses on delineating lack of anonymity from privacy, confidentiality, and familiarity. The outcome of our current research will advance our understanding of familiarity as a concept of rural nursing practice and how it may influence care provided in rural locations. In addition to the accepted poster presentation, her team has submitted a protocol article that's under peer review and has three additional planned manuscripts that will fully disseminate the research process and findings. Congratulations. The second recipient of the Sandra Eggenberger Leadership in Advancing Family and Societal Health and Healing Through Education Research or Practice Award is Dr. Pat Beyerwaldes. Pat exemplifies leadership to advance the health and healing of family or society in her teaching, practice, and research. Her leadership in nursing practice is demonstrated in her role as coordinator of the school-based nurse managed clinic at the Pond Family Center. Pat's scholarship focuses on family health. In the past two years alone, she has demonstrated leadership by disseminating her work in two co-authored publications, one on an educational intervention incorporating digital storytelling to implement family nursing, and the other on ICU nurse family engagement from a global perspective. Um, she has also had numerous presentations of these studies at international and national conferences. Pat's leadership and teaching family-focused care is evident at the graduate level, child and adolescent health course she teaches, as well as the advanced nursing actions course. Um, she mentors graduate and undergraduate students at the Health Commons at Pond Family Center. Congratulations. The Linda Winkle Outstanding Undergraduate Student Performance Award is being awarded to McKenna Hogan. McKenna is constantly and diligently seeking knowledge and new experiences. For her superior academic performance, McKenna was selected as the Meredith Nursing Scholar. In this role, she collaborates with the Maverick Family Nursing Simulation Center coordinator to provide direct support to simulation and the nursing lab. McKenna was selected as a nurse intern at Karis Health Rice Memorial Hospital in Wilmer, Minnesota during the summer of 2021. As an intern, McKenna advanced her patient and family communication, engaged in health promotion, and provided acute nursing care to patients across the lifespan and from different ethnic backgrounds. McKenna demonstrates leadership and being a student representative to the pre-licensure program committee for her cohort. In this role, she gathers, synthesizes, and provides student feedback to faculty about the pre-licensure program. The open communication and collaboration between students and faculty is essential to the success of the program. McKenna further demonstrates leadership as a student ambassador for the College of Allied Health and Nursing um, Advisory Board. As a student ambassador, she attends monthly meetings with the college dean and participates in events, service, engages with current and prospective students. McKenna is currently the student ambassador's record coordinator. The impact of McKenna's leadership extends from student experiences and simulation all the way up to the college level. Congratulations. Sawyer Sass is the recipient of the Normal Crumwoody Outstanding Baccalaureate Completion Student Performance Award. Sawyer graduated with her ADN in December of 2020 from Inver Hills and then immediately started her BS in nursing upon graduation. Sawyer is an outstanding student in the RNTBSN program and will graduate from the RNTBS program at MSU in May with 
magna cum laude university honors. Prior to becoming an RN, Sawyer was an LPN for about eight years and worked with various providers and specialties in a clinic setting, but always felt the pull to do more. Her lifelong nursing dream is to work in the emergency department. We commend Sawyer on her stellar academic performance and past and future contributions to nursing. Congratulations. Our final award is the Sonia Myers Outstanding Graduate Student Performance Award, and that is going to Sarah Ogilvie. Sarah will be graduating from our DNP program in May, and as a student has been outstanding in her engagement in at least three scholarly projects, disseminating them at several venues. She has presented her collaborative work on family interviews, guiding a school-based program for children with type 1 diabetes at three conferences as a podium presentation at the International Family Nursing Association Conference in June of 2021, as a poster presentation of initial thinking at the Midwest Nursing Research Society Conference in spring of 2020, and also as a poster presentation of final results at the Midwest Nursing Research Society Conference in spring of 2022. Arising from her DNP project work, she gave a pre-recorded on-demand presentation at the National Association for Healthcare Quality, NAHQ Next National Conference in fall of 2021, entitled Innovation in Primary Care Setting, Using the Award Model to Articulate Workload. She's also a member of the international research team working on a research project entitled, or titled Ethics in Meth Medical Technology Research, her scholarly work has been recognized in the awarding of a Hope Nursing Research Scholarship, a Becky Taylor Fellowship, and a Graduate Student Research Grant. Sarah's professional leadership is demonstrated by her membership and participation in several professional groups. At MSU, she has served as a student co-representative to the Graduate Program Committee, representing the DNP students for the past three years. She is also a key participant in the recent program accreditation site visit. Sarah is a student member of several groups, the International Family Nursing Association, including the IFNA Student Engagement Group, the American Association of Nurse Practitioners, the National Association for Healthcare Quality, the Midwest Nursing Research Society, the Minnesota Nurse Practitioners, and our own Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing since 2008. Congratulations to all of our award recipients. Have a good evening. Good evening. I'm Dr. Chris Tuft. I'm chair of the Leadership Succession Committee, and I'm here to help facilitate the installation of our new chapter officers. The mission of Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing is advancing world health and celebrating nursing excellence in scholarship, leadership, and service. Its purposes are to recognize superior achievement, to recognize the development of leadership qualities, to foster high professional standards, encourage creative work, and strengthen commitment to the ideals and purposes of the profession. These purposes are of greatest significance in a chapter's selection of officers and in the determination of its activities. The following officers have been elected for the 2022-2024 biennium. Laura Schwartz, President-Elect. Elizabeth Coleman, Faculty Counselor. And Abby Simic in her second term as Secretary. Congratulations to each of you. I'm going to take a few minutes and review the duties of each of the chapter officers as described in the bylaws. I'm going to focus on the three that were elected for this year. The president-elect shall succeed into the presidency at the end of the term of office and shall promote the purposes of the society. At that point, the president she becomes the president and will serve as a chief representative of the chapter in chapter activities, inter-chapter activities, and shall be an ex officio member of all committees except leadership succession. 
The secretary shall prepare and distribute the meeting minutes and correspondence. And lastly, a counselor shall be a member of the faculty at the Institution of Higher Education where the chapter is located, with the exception of counselors within alumni chapters. Incoming officers, please unmute your microphones. Are the duties of your new position fully understood? With that, keep your microphones unmuted and we're going to review the leadership oath together. So please repeat after me. I do undertake to fulfill the duties of my office to the best of my ability and to work for the purposes of Sigma Theta Tau International. That's it. Congratulations and welcome. Let's give them a quick round of applause. And with that, we're going to transition to our guest speaker. And I have the sincere privilege of welcoming and introducing Dr. Peggy Sloda. Um, she is from Georgetown University and my faculty mentor. Um, she is a professor in the Department of Advanced Nursing Practice and the director of the DN. P graduate studies, serving as program director for the BSN to DNP and PM to DNP programs. Her experience includes professional positions as a critical care nurse specialist, transport nurse, staff development educator, university faculty, and administrative director of critical care services. As an administrator, she was responsible for operations in multiple critical care units and respiratory palliative care critical care transport and ECMO services. She initiated a collaborative research program for bedside nurses, led professional development and peer recognition programs, initiated a hospital-based cardiopulmonary nursing fellowship program, and implemented an inpatient and outpatient palliative care program. Dr. Slota served on the board of directors for the Center of Organ Recovery and Education at the UPMC Center for Emergency Medicine in Stat Medivac, and was a member of the Nursing Advisory Council to the Pennsylvania State Emergency Medical Services. She is an active environmental health. She is active in environmental health concerns, and was previously chair of the PSNA Environmental Health Committee. She is currently on the Board of Directors for Women for a Healthy Environment, a consultant for the Mid-Atlantic Center for Children's Health in the Environment, a member of the Climate Reality Leadership Corps, and a steering committee member for the Concerned Health Professionals of Pennsylvania with Physicians for Social Responsibility. She has presented frequently and published many articles in referee journals, as well as three books. She was a member of the National Steering Committee of the Pediatric Special Interest Group for the American Association of Critical Care Nurses, an editorial board member for the Critical Care Nurse, first department editor for Pediatric Critical Care and Critical Care Nurse, and editor of all three editions of the core curriculum for Pediatric Critical Care Nursing. She has been honored as a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing, a fellow in the AACN Leadership for Academic Nursing Program, Cameos of Caring Nurse Educator Award, UPMC Beckworth Fellow, Nightingale Award Finalist in Nursing Research, and Nurse of the Year at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh in the fall of 2021. Dr. Sloda received the Georgetown University Provost Award for Innovation in Teaching and was named as a GUMC Distinguished Educator. With no further ado, my friend and colleague, Dr. Peggy Sloda. Hello. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you for inviting me to speak tonight on a topic that I think is very important and that I am very passionate about, healthcare climate change advocacy. Our voices really matter in advocacy. So when we're advocating for patients and providing educational and healthcare resources, and also attempting to influence public policy for health, we can really make a difference in climate change. 
on this slide, I've listed just a few of the environmental determinants of health. These are factors that are pervasive and integral to assessment, planning, and implementation of healthcare. So when you think about all these environmental determinants of health, I'd like you to put that into the perspective of climate change, what's currently happening now globally. So let's start with a brief overview of what climate change is, how it's impacting the earth, and how it can potentially impact health. And I'd like to acknowledge the Climate Reality Project for some of these slides. This is a photo of the Earth, probably the first one that many of us saw. This was taken by the Apollo 17 astronauts in 1972. And it was the first time we saw the Earth fully illuminated from space. And it is beautiful. There are several questions to consider when you think about climate change and whether or not it's really a crisis or urgent. And that first question is, must we change? This is a photo of the Earth's atmosphere. It's not as vast and limitless as you might think it is. It is a restricted space. And we are putting more than 152 million tons of man-made global pollution into the thin shell of our atmosphere every 24 hours. The way that energy works is that the sun provides energy that comes into our atmosphere producing heat. Some of that heat is retained by the earth. Some of the heat is re-radiated into the atmosphere. That's a good thing because we need to have some heat in the atmosphere to keep the temperature stable on earth. But as the carbon dioxide concentration has increased and continues to increase, more of the outgoing radiation is trapped within the atmosphere. The atmosphere has begun to thicken and the temperature on the earth has begun to increase. These are some of the sources of greenhouse gases on the earth. There's a significant number of ways that greenhouse gases can be produced. But the largest source of global warming pollution is the burning of fossil fuels. And you can see what a significant increase there has been in the last half of the century. At the same time, the surface temperature of the earth has significantly increased. And look at the last um, 20 years. The increase in temperature is phenomenal. In fact, 19 of the 20 hottest years on record have occurred since the year 2001. And the hottest of all have been in the last five years. So temperature is definitely increasing. And the number of heat-related emergencies and health crises among humans and animals as well has increased quite a bit. At the same time, the global ocean heat content has increased correspondingly. And if you look at this graph, this is only since 1960. Half of this increase has occurred in less than 20 years. So the temperature of the ocean is really increasing. Well, why does this matter? Because it has a significant impact on storms that occur. As ocean temperature rises, the amount of precipitation rises. This is a photo of um, Hurricane Florence in 2018 as it hit the Carolinas. The way the cycle works is that water is evaporated from the oceans and other bodies of water, leading to precipitation, which is then returned to the earth and to the sea. If the ocean temperature is warmer, more water evaporates, the amount of precipitation is greater, and it may return to the earth more forcefully. So we have greater flooding, mudslides, bigger, longer, stronger, more devastating storms. This is a photo of a storm cell with a significant amount of um, precipitation taken over Montana. Flooding and mudslides have occurred across the world as the increase in precipitation occurs. And that extra heat that evaporates more water from the ocean causing these bigger downpours and floods also 
pulse moisture even more quickly from the soil, causing longer and deeper droughts. The droughts have significantly impacted water shortages across the globe. 40% of people in the world don't have an adequate water supply and it has surely impacted crop production as well. Hotter years typically have more fires and those fires, wildfires have become hotter and longer and tougher to control as the years go on. This depicts one of the wildfires that was long lasting in Canada. We've heard a lot about the fires in um, Australia more recently and certainly in the US as well. In general, worldwide extreme weather catastrophes, including storms, floods, mudslides, extreme heat, droughts, and fires have increased and continue to increase every year. We've also lost the mass of ice across the globe. So where there are significant collections of ice, that is declining. And this slide depicts the declining ice mass in Greenland as an example. And it is really um, astounding the amount of ice that has been lost. In my, there are sunny days when there are floods related to the higher levels of the ocean. These are sunny days unrelated to any form of storm, but just the rising sea level continues to rise. And in fact, when you look at the 10 cities at risk from sea level rise, by 2070, Miami is in the lead at the epicenter of this issue with rising sea level. So they're very concerned and looking at many ways to try to address this. The Department of Defense in 2014 made a statement saying that climate change would likely lead to food and water shortages, pandemic disease, disputes over refugees and natural disasters. And Sadly, all of this has come true. There has been a lot of migration of refugees related to um, areas that they are unable to find water and or have adequate crop production and or the areas are uninhabitable related to natural disasters. So this is really a crisis. I don't think we've been sensitive enough to how sensitive crops are to heat and how much these temperature increases have impacted crops along with, them with impacting the amount of water available for those crops. So it has led to food shortages as well. And it really is a medical emergency as these crises occur with extreme temperatures, longer, stronger, more devastating, storms and natural disasters, wildfires, and inadequate water and heat production. Tropical diseases are on the move. So diseases that might have been located in one area of the world are continuing to move across the globe. And we now risk losing up to 50% of land-based species in this century. The cost of carbon just a number of different factors that are contributing to the cost of carbon, the losses related to carbon. And it is the number one threat to the global economy. So we need to stabilize climate change to stabilize the economy. So must we change? The answer to that question as demonstrated is yes. The next question is, can we change? And we do have the solutions at hand. So this is very positive. There's been a lot of progress with green energy. The projection in the year 2000 was that we would reach 20 gigawatts by 2010. But in reality, that goal has been exceeded by a factor of 22 times. Global wind energy capacity has grown significantly. This graph is just so positive. And globally, wind could actually supply worldwide energy consumption 40 times over if we used it, if we greatly increased 
the amount of production of wind power. Solar energy progress has been equally positive. Again, in 2002, the goal was to grow by one gigawatt a year. In reality, that goal has been exceeded by 121 times. And if you look at installations for solar production across the world, greatly increased. The cost of producing the solar modules has come down a lot too has, as technology has increased. So that is a good change as well to promote this technology. The low initial costs make small solar systems very affordable in developing countries. And actually the solar energy coming from the sun that reaches the earth every hour could fulfill the world's energy needs for a full year in one hour. We just need to capture that. <clears throat> Along with being able to produce energy, you need to be able to store it. And fortunately, the storage capacity for these alternative energy productions have increased and continue to increase. That's another positive. LED lights will comprise 95% of the market by 2025. And the benefit of this is that they use very little energy. They have a very long life. So the cost, the initial cost for an LED light is very reasonable because of the length of time that it lasts. Electric vehicles are being produced in greater numbers and they continue to refine the technology so that they are slowly becoming more affordable. So can we change? Yes, we can change. And then the final question to discuss is, will we change? In the 2015 Paris Agreement, every nation in the world agreed to work together to achieve net zero greenhouse emissions by mid century. This is a photo of a climate march in Washington, DC, but there have been climate marches all over the world. And fortunately, the youth are getting very involved and very much supportive of reaching a solution collaboratively so that we can move forward progress to combat climate change. So I encourage you to join those who are using their voices, their votes and their choices to fight the climate crisis. Use your voice, your vote and your choice to speak truth to the power like your world depends on it. Because actually your world depends on it. So what can we do as individuals and consumers to make a difference? The first might be to start at home, reducing your own footprint and to reduce air pollution, um, things like conserving energy, recycling, planting trees to provide summer shade and winter light, buying your electricity source from a green um, electricity source, using timers, using warmer, cooler water, no or low block um, paint, and then testing for radon, choosing not to smoke. These are all things that we can do that are small things for us, but may make a big difference in the overall picture. So I would ask you to reflect, have I been a good steward of the earth? What are some ways that you could reduce your personal impact on the environment? Think about at least one change you will make to protect your health and the health of others. I have one that I might suggest. You would be surprised at the volume of plastic water bottles produced every single minute in the world. You might make a resolution to decrease or eliminate the use of plastic water bottles. They have a great impact in terms of water use and the production process and that kind of industry contributing to greenhouse gases. So you might just cut down on the amount of plastic water bottles that you buy and take your reusable water bottle with you everywhere you go. That's one very easy way to make a big difference. And choose a method where you can advocate for reform. That might be within your employment setting, within your community, within your professional organization, but to move forward the progress that we're making toward global climate crisis change. Our voices matter in advocacy. 
First, we want to do no harm. So we want to use the precautionary principle that says, when an activity raises threats of harm to human health or the environment, precautionary measures should be taken even if some cause and effect relationships are not fully established scientifically. So you might start by doing a risk assessment of what are things happening in your community, in your family, in your neighborhood, at your workplace that cause some risk to the environment and to um, the amount of pollution we're putting into the atmosphere? And what plan would you have for moving forward? Lots of nurses have been involved in protesting and marching for climate change but you don't need to do a march. There's a lot of things you can do on your own that makes a difference with your own family or your own workplace, but take some action so that your voice is heard. We have trusted voices as nurses. Nurses continue to rate the highest in honesty and ethics. I think it's up to 20 years in a row by now. So your voice is trusted and it really makes a difference. I would like to end by sharing a short video produced by the Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments. I'm very proud to be a nurse. Nurses are unique. We're the ones in the closest day-to-day -day contact with patients, which may be why year after year, nurses are ranked as the most trusted of all professions. It gives us the chance to make a real difference for the patients and our community. Nurses have a long history of protecting public health. From Florence Nightingale, who first brought attention to the connection between health and environment, to Lillian Wald, who helped improve health conditions in New York City tenements. Making the world a healthier place is what we do. And now we're faced with a new challenge. Our climate is changing and our health is suffering as a result. While climate change may not be everyone's top priority, nurses have a major opportunity to help our patients and our communities live healthier lives. I've been seeing two specific impacts of climate change on health in my daily work, asthma and Lyme disease. Maine has one of the highest asthma rates in the country. 13% of our adults live with asthma. We're at the end of the Gulf Stream, so the air pollution from across the country is coming into Maine. We've had immense explosion of ticks this year. Normally, the ticks die off in the winter, but that didn't happen this winter. As a former public health department director, the impacts of climate were apparent all around us. With extreme weather changes, we had increased flooding. We had seniors that had high rates of heat stroke. In southern Nevada, the the length of our summer is longer, the heat days are more intense. The thing that I've seen is an increased number of respiratory illnesses, bad exacerbations of COPD. As I think about climate change, I think about the bigger picture. If we don't take action now, we don't know what the future will look like. I feel it's a moral imperative as a nurse to address it, not only for the health of our children, but also for the future of our children. No matter what kind of specialty you're in, your patients are already being impacted by climate change. As nurses, we have the power and opportunity to step up and take action on climate solutions. Here's what you can do. Get informed. Find out how climate impacts health, how solutions protect it, and what you can do. I think that as a professional nurse, it's incumbent upon me to try to educate myself as much as I can about the things that impact our patients and the environment that we live in. You don't have to have any expertise, just be willing to learn as much as you can. Lead by example. Spread the word. The Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments has really helped me to communicate in effective ways with policymakers, local community members. Four million nurses working together can do amazing things. And now is the time for us to act. We can come together and make it possible for our children, our grandchildren, and for future generations to enjoy this beautiful planet we live in. Don't ever forget that you're not alone on this issue, that we stand shoulder to shoulder to address uh, this issue of climate change and health. The Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments is a network of nurses from around the country helping to integrate environmental health into our education, 
workplaces, and practices. Through our partnership with Climate for Health, we want to inspire and empower every nurse in America to lead on climate change. Take action now by joining our alliance and getting your own nursing organization involved with addressing climate change. Check out the communication resources at Climate for Health and learn how you can be a part of the solution. So inspirational. Four million voices that yours can join with. Congratulations again on this significant honor that you received tonight and good luck moving forward. I hope you share your voice against climate change. Thank you for attending. Good night. Thank you, Dr. Sloto, for that inspiring presentation. Each biennium, Sigma installs a new president at the international level. At the 46th Biennial Convention, we proudly installed Dr. Ken Dion and introduced him as the 34th Sigma president. Each president presents a call to action to help guide members and chapters as we strive to fulfill our mission. Going forward, this will be an organizational call to action with influence from the board of directors. The organizational call to action asks us to be bold. As a profession, we have a habit of talking among ourselves. We attend nursing conferences, we publish in nursing journals, and we often remain in silos within the organizations where we are employed. The status quo cannot remain. If nothing else, the past two years has shown us how events outside of nursing can force change within it. Consider COVID-19 a wake-up call. The future is coming and it will profoundly affect nursing education, research, healthcare systems, and ultimately models of care. Our profession must step outside its insular circle. We must actively collaborate with disciplines outside nursing and healthcare to influence decisions about our profession, populations, and the planet in three critical domains, economics, technology, and conservation. As we move forward in a post-pandemic world, it remains our duty as a profession to advocate to abolish inequities within societies, healthcare systems, and even within our profession. Advocacy has always been central to nursing, but how do we focus our advocacy for the future? Taking stock in our past, the present, and potential futures can help us determine how to do that. Economics is a science of decision-making, and it's all about power. Fluency in the language of economics and power can better influence decision makers to recognize and utilize the value of the nursing profession. We interact with technology daily in our personal and professional lives. Therefore, we must be able to converse in a strategic manner with the stakeholders developing the technologies, as well as those involved in purchasing and implementing them within our, our organizations. To do so, we must be fluent in the language of technology. Conservation is not just about the planet, although that is a part of it. It's an economic way of thinking. Many economies around the globe are based on consumption. If their populations are not consuming more, their economies will not grow. And if their economies do not grow, they will suffer economic collapse. Sadly, these models are not sustainable. If we raise the collective voice of nursing to influence and inspire populations who trust us, our leaders will be challenged to embrace a future different from the one we are headed toward. Nurses can lead the way in three areas, education, research, and models of care. I would encourage you all to learn more and participate in fulfilling the organizational call to action by visiting Sigma's website, sigmanursing.org. As we conclude our ceremony, I wanna take a moment to recognize and thank all who joined today's event to celebrate the special occasion. A special thank you to faculty counselors, Dr. Kelly Crumwady and Dr. Laura Schwartz for their leadership and careful planning. Once again, I wanna congratulate and welcome our newest Sigma members, 
We welcome you into this prestigious and global network of nurses working every day to change lives and to advance healthcare. I wish you all a good evening.